Located on 225 acres in Garden City, Long Island, Nassau Community College, a member of the State University of New York System, has close to 20,000 students attend the school each year. The college mascot is Leo the Lion, and these are his stories of the school's absolute best and brightest who have graduated over the past 50 plus years. So let's catch up together as the Alumni Association of Nassau Community College proudly presents Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Lion Tales. My name is Dr. Linda Nadian and I am a director on the board of the Alumni Association at Nassau Community College and a proud Nassau Community College graduate. Together, let's celebrate the successes of our alum and share stories that will inspire, uplift, and hopefully amuse you. Each week, I will introduce you to one of our alumni who will share their Nassau Community College experience and the secrets to their success after graduation. The Alumni Association has many events planned in the upcoming school year, and we are excited to have all of our alum on board for these many exciting events. Look for our new and exciting events on the NCC Alumni Association pages on Facebook, Instagram, and our webpage. If you have any positive news you would like to share about alumni happenings, we would love to hear from you on our website at ncc.edu slash alumni. Today, our distinguished alumni guest is Lori George, Nassau Community College Class of 1998, who now serves as the president of the Alumni Association at Nassau Community College. She grew up in Long Island City and attended St. Rita's Roman Catholic School, Our Lady of Perpetual Help Business High School, and ultimately graduated from LaGuardia Community College. Lori worked for a real estate company in a lease, as a leasing supervisor and retired in October of 2020. Lori was inspired by her mother to make service her signature and serve the community in many capacities, including teaching religious education for 17 years and for the past 12 years serving our alumni board as vice president and now as president. Her journey has not been easy as she has battled breast cancer and due to an aggressive treatment has been in remission for the past two years. Lori is brave and courageous and one of our most dedicated and esteemed alum. Welcome to Lion Tales, Lori George, class of 1998. Thank you, Linda. So tell us about your decision uh, way back when to attend Nassau Community College. My decision to attend Nassau Community College was first, it was close to my house. And second, it was the availability of the evening and weekend program that inspired me to attend Nassau Community College. Yeah, why do you think having that offering um, evening and weekend classes is is really a great uh, motivator for students to continue? Because I attended it while working full-time. It's very difficult for those who want to get their degrees to attend classes during the day. However, when colleges, especially community colleges, offer weekend and evening programs, it's easier for the business community to come and update their certifications, uh, finish their associate's degrees, move on to their bachelor degrees. And Nassau Community College was so helpful in uh, getting many business um, executives to go back to school. And what were some of your favorite courses then? I was in the paralegal um, program. Some of my favorite courses was um, bankruptcy and corporations, um, litigation, and many of the other. um, I can't remember all of them, but those two stand out. Mm -hmm. And do you remember who were some of your most memorable professors? One in particular, I still think he's still teaching. He is Professor Joseph Caruso. Mm-hmm. And what was special about Professor Caruso? He he loved helping the students. He was very knowledgeable. He was um, it was easy to get the assignments done with him. He it was just a great experience with Professor Caruso. Yeah, we love when we hear that because that does help motivate the students. What have you learned as a community volunteer, and why has that service been so rewarding to you? What I've learned as a community volunteer is that there are a lot of people out there who need help. 
And as a community volunteer with your experiences, you can provide that help. Um, teaching religious education, um, I showed future students what it was like to give back to the community. And I found that a lot of my students ended up teaching in the religious education program after I retired. So showing them what community volunteer does um, inspires others to do the same. Yeah, one of the things I was thinking about is that when, when even when we have an alumni meeting, everyone there is a volunteer and they're coming together and we're trying to you know, promote the goals of the Alumni Association. And we also do that. We seem to have more fun doing that than we do with our regular jobs. <laughs> and we're not getting paid or compensated. We're just trying to, you know, meet these goals that, that we've established. And what do you think about, you know, those feelings about volunteerism versus being paid? Volunteerism, I find that, especially with the students here and with the students everywhere, they're very welcoming. They're very gracious. They're their um, their gratitude that there's somebody here that wants to help them and um, move them along. We've received so many letters um, over the years from students who've received our alumni scholarships. Some of the letters brought me to tears, mm -hmm. you know, because the money literally helped them finish uh, their education. Um about three or four years ago, I received um, someone. They didn't actually have all the criteria for the scholarship, but they needed the money for books. If they didn't get the money for the scholarship, they would have had to drop out, and I was not going to let that happen. Right. Yeah, that's an amazing feeling when you can, you know, reach out and having this alumni association being so active and, you know, also the work that you've done. You know, I know because I've seen, you know, you have a heightened awareness of what the students need and also being able to pursue what they need. You know, you kind of get in touch with them and say, look, this is what we can offer. So that's really an incredible thing that that's being done with the alumni association. And now uh, as our current president, what are some of your goals for our survival and fitness post-pandemic? Because now we're really coming out of three years of, of doing a lot of Zoom work and a lot of everything computerized, but now we're back together again physically and we want to make some changes. Right. First of all, I, I must stress to everybody that you have to um, take care of your health and you have to you know, worry about the others who you're coming into contact with, you know. So it's a very big responsibility, you know, our health. Um, just to let everybody know, I still wear my mask when I go indoors everywhere. Mm -hmm. I I don't take that chance. I still wear my mask. Um, I still wash my hands all the time, you know. These Absolutely. are just safety issues that we do. But as for our goals, our goal in the Alumni Association is to build our fund so that we can turn around and continue to, to help our students here and to increase our scholarship donations to our students. That is our main goal. And I think that we're, how are we sort of making the students even more aware of what can be offered to them and even bringing back alum? What are some of the things that we have done that I think that, that were probably successful? What do you think they were? Some of the, first of all, um, posting the information that we have on Facebook. We had one of our former directors who was doing um, the hashtag and the Twitter yeah. and tweeting out. Um, what the alumni was doing and what the board was doing, um, getting involved in different events here on campus with, you know, with uh, the physical ed department, with uh, the foundation, with um, the Nest, with Sue Mitchell. We have to be involved on campus. There's no question because if we want to bring our alumni back, we have to be involved here. We have to go attend their events as well as them attending our events in order to attract everybody. And we have to bring the whole business community together. The other day I went to um, 
AAA in Garden City to update my license. And I spoke to the assistant branch manager, and I mentioned to her that we were having this huge event in November, and she gave me her card. I sent the information to the other partners I'm working with because they want to have a table at our event. This is how we bring the business community together. We have to, when we go into our mom and pop stores and everything else, we have to let them know that the college is having big events and yeah. if we could put a flyer or something to let the Absolutely. community know. You are listening is- to Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I am your host, Dr. Linda Nadian, and our guest today is Lori George, Nassau Community College Class of 1998, who now serves as the president of the Alumni Association at Nassau Community College. And we were just discussing the fact that the Alumni Association is particularly interested in involving community businesses and having the support when we do have a big event, you know, such as maybe a homecoming or any type of alumni and recruitment day. And uh, you were speaking about how just in talking to someone, somehow NASA comes up. Right. What makes a successful president? A successful president is one that wants to contribute, contribute their ideas, wants to work with Every department and every student, a successful president in any company has to be mindful of the fact that we all need to work together. It has to be cooperation. It has to be community. We all have to have the same goals and ideals in order to make um, this work. I mean, if we don't, if we if we don't have the same goals and ideals, then we'll have to find a different way. But we all have to come together and realize that our function at, as uh, the alumni association is to make the students have an experience here at the college that some of us wished we had. Absolutely. Yeah. And we think about the future of Nassau Community College as one of the many prestigious community colleges in the state and growing the Alumni Association. And we did speak a little bit about that, but what would be some goals to kind of even grow it even further? Our goals would be to hold functions big and small to bring our alum back in. Um, We also send out our newsletters to Mm -hmm. our alum. We um, were posting on Facebook, as I stated, and just when you go to an event, you go outside, anywhere you go, um, just talk about Nassau Community College. Attend um, school board meetings for the high schools. You know, that's very important. If you attend one school board meeting at the high schools and you get up and you speak and and you say, I'm from Nassau Community College, I'm an alum. Um, these are the great things that are happening. We would like, you know, for your juniors and seniors to consider coming to coming to take a virtual tour and see what we right. are. Absolutely. And again, ncc.edu slash alumni, where you can send us any of the positive news that you do have. And also, again, contacting the high schools and, the, and those high school students, because, again, we don't want... Community college can be an amazing experience. Not every student is prepared for a four-year stint right out of high school. Sometimes going to the college, a uh, community college, will probably be the foundation. How is it a foundation for you coming into Nassau? The foundation for me coming into Nassau Community College versus going straight into a four-year college was the fact that you learned how to do your papers. You learned how to write essays on the college level. You learned how to write your legal papers on the college level. Um, I think community colleges serve a purpose, and the purpose is to help the students advance and achieve to go to the dream college they want right. in the future. So if I've seen a lot of We've watched a lot of our students here graduate with honors. Absolutely. A lot of our students have graduated and gone on to four-year schools. And it's 
the preparation here at Nassau Community College that teaches them how to be successful for their next two years of college life. Yeah, and we were speaking about it even at one of our alumni meetings that we just had, I think, last week about um, pe- directors on the alumni board that that either have you know their PhD or have pursued this higher education. Where I, for me, I don't think it would have been able to be possible without my experience at Nassau because, again, coming out of high school. There weren't very limited options. And, you know, thinking of these four-year schools, I really didn't even know about them. Um, So as far as Nassau preparing their students, and we speak about the scholarships, um, what are what ha- what has been some of the feedback from the students that have had the scholarships? You said they they're they're writing to tell you that they've gone on to the next level. They've gone on to the next level, yes. And they also um, appreciated the fact that the money they received was enabled them to continue. You know, um, it's important that we all realize that even though students get scholarships, you know, coming into all the colleges, whatever, it doesn't cover everything. Right. Um, I've heard I, my, my nephew was, was a student athlete. He got a full scholarship, but it doesn't cover everything. You know, it covers a lot of things, but they only get a certain amount of meal plans. Right, and, yeah. And they still have to turn around and work if they want spending money for entertainment, for Absolutely. going out. And here, too, at the community college level, you know, students still need money. Some of them used our scholarship money to pay for their transportation back and forth, to pay for their gas to come, to pay for their lunches, you know. And I feel that um, when you start at the community college, you get an experience not only in how to prepare yourself for the next, for the many years to come that you're going to continue your education. You also get an experience of community, of really being together with groups and groups of people. And I have to say that when I left Nassau Community College and then I went on to St. John's to get my bachelor's, um, one of my friends that I met here, I am still friends with her today. Wow, we that's just amazing. had dinner last <laughs> week. And the same thing with my St. John's friends. We all graduated together and we are all still together and we all went out to dinner last week. You know, so you build on a friendship. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are some of you who will stay friends for the rest of your lives because you build on friendship. It teaches you friendship. It teaches you community. It teaches you how to work in groups. It teaches you how to get deadlines done. A lot of this is not taught on the high school level, you know, because there's only so much that the teachers on the high school level can teach and show students. But when you go to a community college, you have a deadline to get all your work done, to get everything done. And if and you have to know that you only have one semester to get four or five subjects, all the work done by the beginning of December. Mm-hmm. And how has Nassau Community College really changed since you attended? I mean, we think about your graduation date of 1998, and now it's tw- almost 2023. Mm-hmm. And we keep talking about the 21st century, but we're already 23 years in. And, you know, going back, forget about the pandemic, but I think there was some type of simplicity or beauty about being a student during that time that now it might be a little bit harder or different for there a was student. A, there was a simplicity. There was um, something magical about it back in the 20th century. You are listening to Lion Tales on the Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Dr. Linda Nadian, and our guest today is Lori George, class of 1998, who now serves as the president of the Alumni Association at Nassau Community College. And we were just speaking about the difference between, let's say, the era of 1998, the, you know, the mid to late 90s, being a student at Nassau, and then now we're coming into again, 23 years into this millennium, and uh, we were talking about the simplicity of 
being a student then? You know, was it different? And was it simple? And what were the challenges versus now? The challenges, I think, were, um, well, I didn't find that many challenges because, remember, I was weekend and evening. So most of the time, we just came to class, did our classwork or whatever, and went home and then didn't come back until the following week till the evening or the weekend, you know. But the changes at Nassau are so great. There wasn't any daycare when we came. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a nest, a food pantry. There wasn't a lot of student services that they're offering now were not offered back in 1998. Um, I think we've evolved and there's been evolution here at the college to service the needs of all the students. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that... You know, now we we are certainly in, I guess, a societal situation where people are, are they may not be even commuters. That's for an example. Like now students may take an Uber to school and, and they may be picked up or dropped off and or taking transportation, uh, local transportation, bus riding or even the train to school. Um, because they don't have a vehicle, so that sort of changes that that commuter um, aspect of becoming a student here. A lot of the students, I think, coming now, they're they're also you know relying on social media and their phone to get information. So it was very different back then because we didn't we didn't have the access to the telephone the way that they do. No, we didn't have access to. Um it wasn't the cell phone era yet. No. Not really. Only those. It wasn't the cell phone era yet. It wasn't. The internet was just starting, but mm-hmm. it wasn't really available to each and every person. Each and every person was never able to afford a home computer. Right. There, weren't, there were no laptops invented yet. No. Did you have Did you have a typewriter? How did you do your papers? Um. Most of my papers, I would come to campus and do them on campus, on mm-hmm. the campus computers yeah. here. Um, some of them, I did have a typewriter, and um, I bought a high-speed typewriter to do my papers on. I had a typewriter, too, and with the ribbon, and you would go to Office Max. I don't even know if it was Office Max. Maybe it was Staples, but we would go and get the ribbon so that we could type because the paper would usually be due, and we would use up so much ink from the typewriter. Right. Now, even we were talking about typing, do you know how to type? Yes. Yeah. What are some of your interests and and hobbies besides um, the work that you do for the Alumni Association and then work that you do in other volunteer areas? Well, this is the only volunteering. I used to teach religious education. Mm -hmm. Um, But at home, I crochet and I like to cook. So I do cook dinner once in a while. (laughs) And um, I go out and clean the lawn and everything. But I take care of my neighbor's properties, you know, when the garbage people, you know, put their garbage cans back and everything else. I think you can consider that community. That's good. It's good to know your neighbors. Love thy neighbor is very important. Yes. But I also help those who've recently discovered they've had breast cancer or going through breast cancer, the questions they need to ask. You know what they should be eating. You know, right? And you've friends had, and family. You know, you've had pretty aggressive treatment over the years. And how has that sort of changed your mindset in terms of you know having a positive outlook and and really being able to be an advocate for your own health? That has changed because I had a wonderful oncologist and his staff. They brought me through it not once but twice. When you have an oncologist who cares for you and the staff cares for you and you can call them any time, day and night, doesn't matter, you know, it really helps your mindset, you know. And they were there to push me because sometimes I was going once a week for 16 weeks, the second round, and there was weeks where... I was just saying to myself, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I can't do this anymore. And my brother would push me. My father would push me. And they would push me. Sometimes they would sit there and hold my hand. You know, those in oncology are the most caring people I have met. Wow. That's amazing. 
because, uh, again, making sure women's health is top priority. I mean, sometimes we forget that. And, you know, you're you're a living example of that because you really were an advocate and you had excellent medical care that you were able to survive and then survive again because it was it was a double whammy right. to be able to survive again. Right. And the only thing I have to say about breast cancer, it's no longer women getting breast cancer. Right. Men are also getting breast cancer, too, because breast cancer cancer has become an environmental issue. Right. So like I posted on Facebook on October 1st, it's that time again. And I mainly posted it for the husbands and the fathers. I said, you guys need to get checked out too. Absolutely. Don't be afraid. No, don't be afraid. I would like to thank our guest, Lori George, Nassau Community College Class of 1998, who now serves as the president of the Alumni Association at Nassau Community College. How can our listeners contact you? We, you can say, even we can use the Alumni um, yeah. Association. So uh, that would be right. ncc.edu slash alumni. Right. And we look forward to all of those emails because we are working truly amazingly well. Um, having a president like Lori is really incredible for all of us. I would like to thank you for being our guest today. My name is Dr. Linda Nadian, and I serve as a director on the board of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association, and I am a proud graduate of Nassau Community College. Visit ncc.edu slash alumni for more information about the Nassau Community College Alumni Association and visit nccradio.org for more information about Lion Tales, including podcasts of past shows. Thanks for listening to Lion Tales here on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.